I love blueberries. But not when they're contaminated with radioactive fallout. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Eradicode 102 to detect if there are radioactive isotopes in your food commonly found after an atomic bomb or after a reactor accident. So let's get into it. So I started working on this project a couple weeks back, uh, but then I took an unexpected swim in the Yellowstone River while I was kayaking. And I was tracking the radiation down the river, and uh, I had the Radicode in a Pelican case, but not the Android phone that was used to collect the data. So I lost uh, all the data that I was running on this um, video before and all the data I have uh, accumulated over the last year uh, using the Radicode uh, 102 and 101 at different locations. So the lesson here is back up your phone more often and um, yeah, so you don't lose that data. I went to recapture the data for this video and I wanted the cleanest possible signal so that I could actually discern the contamination much easier. And so this is a lead castle, and it's made up of six lead bricks. And each brick weighs about 26 pounds, and so this total configuration weighs about 156 pounds. So I had to kind of think about like where I wanted this so I didn't like try and scoot it around because it is very, very heavy. Um, I'm actually gonna probably uh, paint these bricks after this video, I'm gonna paint them white. Uh, just because uh, handling bare lead is not the greatest. Uh, it does rub off on your fingers, and it's uh, not the best thing if you ingest it or if it gets into your bloodstream. So this setup blocks most exterior radiation sources, like cosmic radiation or the radiation from the soil or rocks, which is commonly referred to as background radiation. So if you can eliminate that, you actually get like a really clean signal uh, to use for gamma spectroscopy. And so that's what I wanted to do, even though it's not necessary to, to show the contamination in these food items that I have here. You don't need a lead castle. Uh, I just wanted to do it because I wanted to uh, try it out. I've never built a lead castle for the, uh, an experiment like this. And so I wanted to see how well it actually uh, shielded exterior radiation from the Radicode 102 detector, which it actually did an incredible job. I've actually never seen it get so low ever. Like as far as like the radiation it detects, usually there's like just regular background radiation that you would detect normally anywhere you go. But the minute you put it inside of here, it like completely drops off to like a, a very, very low number. Also, this video is sponsored by Radicode. Uh, they're a great sponsor for this channel because I was already using their gear before they wanted to do a sponsorship with me anyway. So it's a perfect match. There are other gamma spectroscopy setups out there uh, that you can build yourself and with bigger detectors. And But usually those prices kind of like get a little uh, out of control. <laughs> I mean, nothing, nothing so bad. But uh, usually I think this... Uh, Radicode 102 runs around uh, $300 US, or I'll come up, have a little thing of like how much it actually is. And then usually I'll run it with an Android phone. Uh, and I spent maybe um, $85 on this uh, new phone, just basic. I just need something to run the Android operating system. They are working on an iOS app and it's about halfway done right now. They're, uh, they have like a forum where you can actually like test out the iOS app. And so if you do get this, if you don't want to buy an Android phone, you don't have to. It's just a lot of like the features, like kind of the, the radiation tracking uh, using a map and GPS locations, like being logged and all that stuff. That's locked out, but you can do gamma spectroscopy and dose rate monitoring and stuff like that through the app. 
uh, on an iPhone. What I'm testing today are some dried blueberries and two different types of dried mushrooms that were grown in the Belarus region. Now this is an area that the Chernobyl fallout cloud traveled over. And so the fallout cloud actually contaminated the soil in this area and, and everything else that was along there as well. And so the area still has the radioactive isotopes that are commonly found in fallout, which is cesium-137 and strontium-90. So the area is still contaminated from the accident that happened in 1986. So anything grown in that area is going to take up some of that contamination into the fruit or into the mushroom or uh, there's a couple of uh, other plants I think that actually do take up uh, some of these uh, radioactive isotopes. And the problem is, is that cesium-137 is kind of a, it's a weird isotope because it's man-made. It doesn't exist in nature, and so when uh, biological systems are trying to figure out what to do with it, it, it kind of confuses the body or uh, plants and stuff like that. And so when it's taken up, uh, plants will incorporate it into their fruit or into their structure as well. And then if we eat that, uh, it actually accumulates in our muscle mass. And then there's also a strontium-90 that's going to be um, uptook into these items as well. But strontium-90 is really hard to test for. I mean, you can test for it, but I can't test for it using the Radicode 102. You'd actually have to use like a, a mass spectrometer or something along those lines to actually get like a, a sample to see if it's in there. Strontium-90 bioaccumulates in the body as well, but it bioaccumulates in the bones because the body thinks that it's calcium. There is non-radioactive strontium, but strontium-90 is a isotope that is man-made, that only exists in nuclear reactors, nuclear bombs, inside of the fission process. These samples actually aren't radioactive. Well, not radioactive in the sense that you'd think that I would use like this rad IB20 to see if something was radioactive. There's actually no increased or no detectable amount of increase in radiation that I could find with this detector uh, on these items. And so, that's where this really comes in handy because I ran uh, the gamma spectroscopy data for this experiment for each one of these from like 12 to 20 hours, but you don't have to run it that long. I was only doing it that long to get like a really clean signal that I could show in the video, uh, but actually you can start to see the cesium-137 in these contaminated samples just after about five to 10 minutes, which is actually pretty impressive. So I always have this uh, radicode with me whenever I go out and I'm just, you know, exploring an area or even when I'm going to like a football game or something like that. Actually, uh, I went to a Cats game here um, a couple weeks ago when I was walking around. Uh, my meter actually alerted me that there was someone around there that had been uh, taken a Technetium 99M injection for some type of... Uh, nuclear medicine, uh, radiological imaging, uh, you know, who knows when that happened, but they were still radioactive. And so when they walked by me, I could see that someone had walked by me that had that treatment and they were still emitting a lot of radiation. These were actually sent to me uh, from uh, Radicode to do this test. And I really appreciate that they were able to do that because uh, I think for me to get a hold of these types of contaminated food items would have been a little harder for me to do. And I probably could have gone actually to maybe Southern Utah and gone to areas that have experienced a, a nuclear fallout from atomic tests from the Nevada test site. Uh, but those tests stopped back, I believe in the 60s, uh, yeah, late 50s into the 60s. Uh, that's when the moratorium on nuclear testing was put into place where they can only do stuff underground before that completely went away too. So I think to try and find the evidence of, of 
fallout would be a little bit harder. I mean, I have found evidence of fallout up here in Montana, actually on a hiking trail in the Gallatin Canyon using my Radicode 101 before I got this Radicode 102. And so these devices are extremely sensitive. It's actually pretty impressive what they can do. And I really enjoy that I'm able to just take it with me on the trail and find contaminated spots and to see like kind of like where uranium deposits are because like it's kind of like a good way to like visually like see like if you're mapping out an area you can see how the radiation is distributed which is kind of cool and then also to be able to uh check and see if uh uh, your food is contaminated with uh, radioactive fallout uh, that's uh, something new to me i've never never done that before and i thought it was really really cool and so um maybe i'll try and see if there's uh any radioactive uh, or any like um, foods that are contaminated uh, up here in Montana. It'd be kind of a cool like little project to kind of go through and see if there's actually anything that we are unsuspectingly uh, uh, ingesting that is radioactive. So if you want to pick up a Radicode uh, 1 and 2, I'll leave a link in the description or you can go to this link right here. Uh, this is a, a very handy tool to have with you. It's very small works great and you don't need the phone for it to work or to identify uh, isotopes. Um, you can hook it up to a computer, you can gather the data and then extract it off of there into the computer program and use it that way. Uh, I personally like using it on a phone because it's just more feature rich and it's like having that same functionality with you in your pocket instead of having to bring it back to your computer. So that's my take on it. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.